crisis was born right after or during the last phase of Far Cry. For me, it was about, well, the first reaction was I have enough of journals. That was only the first reaction for about a couple of minutes. And I said, no, I'm not done actually with it yet. So I went to uh, one of our art directors and went to Magnus. Shabbat described it pretty, uh, pretty close. He said, I want a jungle scene. It should be in the sunrise. You should see inside a sphere, but it's frozen inside, and there's a alien ship. That was basically the criteria. After like a half day, he came back to me and said, like this, and I said, yeah, that's fantastic. I wanted to make a hero where the player at any moment can change his tactic to survive any given situation. So the player constantly has to adapt to survive in a way he wants to apply his tactics, he wants to overcome the enemy, and he wants to use the environment to overcome the enemy. He wanted two things. Number one is to establish a hero who is visually uh, different from anything that's on the market today. And the reason number two is that as, as the game developed, as we played it, uh, we figured out that it would be cool to have different abilities according to the situation. So the nano suit was born, where you can change his speed, strength, armor, and go to cloak if needed. The concept of the suit was one of the biggest odysseys in the whole process because originally we didn't have it. So in the beginning, the player used to start with a normal, super advanced, modern soldier Delta Force kind of uniform without any special features. And later on, he used to upgrade to some armor, just big tank-looking guy. We talked a lot about Japan anime and, you know, Japanese anime and, and using that and saying, okay, or comic books and saying, well, if I'm going to jump up in strength mode, how, how am I going to look when I do that? You know, am I just going to look like I'm jumping or am I going to have this cool Batman type pose? So we, we went for the Batman pose. The nano suit brought another challenge actually to the level design because with those enhanced abilities, you know, if the player suddenly can make three meter high jumps, if he can run 30 meters in just a couple of seconds, you have to really think differently about your level design. And now really I play on other games and I find myself wanting to do like nano sprint and it's not there and I'm just like, oh, this game kind of, this isn't fun now. <laughs> The big goal about the Aliens of Crisis was always to define a benchmark. We spend more time and money and resources ever in one creature than probably the entire budget of Far Cry. The aliens, we have so many concepts for aliens, I couldn't even count them. I think hundreds. Yeah. Literally. Reference-wise, we looked a lot at underwater little strange fishes and creatures. We can't just have this one kind of alien um, engagement or just this, this kind of threat. We have to have uh, different kinds of aliens and they all should provoke you to a different kind of gameplay. Look different, feel different, do something different. All those different features together should be this interesting alien um, involvement. Reality is, for me, a means of accepting of buying in the gamer. The average age statistically shown is about 25 years old now, today. And they're much more academic or smarter than they were 10 years ago. So ultimately, they have expectations which have become bigger and bigger and bigger. For that matter, more real and more real and more real. Crisis is unsurpassed in terms of its visual quality. Uh, you won't see anything like Crisis um, on the market for some time. And Crytek are well known for uh, producing incredible graphics and um, you know, all the things that go with that in terms of the realism of the game. We have leaves that have light scattering through them with perfect shadowing and everything. We have a uh, very, very good dynamic light system. Everything breaks in this game. We have motion doors, so basically depth of field all the features, all the things that the real camera has. 
it's really amazing to see like a real time rendered ocean that Tiago's working on and just go, <laughs> is he watching a Pixar film? Like, what is it? I mean, to see stuff that's being rendered at 60 frames a second that looks comparative to stuff that I've seen in film is just really, I would say, breathtaking. When we did Far Cry, we made the more the idea of what a jungle should look like. And this time, the goal was to make a real one. The most fun part about the research process was that we got to fly to Tahiti. And we photographed every single piece of leaf, rock, vegetation, whatever we found on this island, everything. We got to feel how things relate to each other, how they grow, how the palm trees look like, how the leaves get affected by looking at the sun through the leaves. If you manage to, to do that, get the little things right, uh, you get a very good sense of immersion for players. One example which used to be used very, very broadly in games is, for example, lens flares on cameras which isn't something you see in real life. If you walk around, you don't see lens there. But the visual impact of that feels real to the player. Initially, we set the direction. We said we want to be as photo real as possible, or for that matter, video real as possible, but also be as interactive as possible. And our technology team, our CryEngine team, said that you cannot have both directions. You have to be either photo real or more interactive. And, uh, I said, no, I want both. I did compromise, but let's try to get both. It's like, okay, um, yeah, we're going to do everything, and we want it to look amazing. And it's like, okay, well, that's going to be a little difficult. And then after almost like one and a half years, I see the first tree ever break in this company. It doesn't sound like a big deal to have a tree breaking in computer graphics, but the thing is the tree looked super real, but then when you shoot it, it started breaking exactly where I shot it and fell over realistically. In gaming, that's a major achievement. And from, for that moment when this happened, two extreme directions we had in mind actually came together. The only problem was back then, it was only one tree. And we said, now we have to be able to destroy every tree in the world.